Hey all, it's Matt, your Average Gamer, and for this video we're going to be taking a look at Eleanor's Pole Blade. This is going to be a build and showcase for it, about 5 minutes long, so it's not going to take up too much of your time. This weapon is incredibly fun to use. Now, on my main channel, I'll attach it in the description below, I did top 40 overpowered builds. You've probably already seen that video, and honestly, Eleanor's Pole Blade probably should have been between 30 and 40. Now, it's going to get beat out in terms of bleed buildup by a lot of twin blades in blood, but that being said, the weapon art is ridiculously enjoyable. Now this next clip here, we're going to show off the weapon art blood blade dance a little bit more. It has a lot to it. It's not boosted by the raptor's black feathers, by the way. I'm just using them because I'm going to show you another option later on. We're also going to show off the light attacks, which are relatively quick. Now the light attacks are relatively quick and really convenient. You have fire damage, standard damage, and you're going to get a little bit of bleed build up too. That being said, blood blade dance is without a doubt the highlight of everything because you can dodge some attacks and it does a lot of damage and bleed build up. If you're looking for a replacement for the Rivers of Blood, by the way, this is definitely one of those weapons that can absolutely replace it. I have no doubt in my mind whatsoever after the five nerfs Rivers of Blood has been through that Eleanor's Pole Blade is better. Next up, we're going to talk about options. In terms of options, you have a whole bunch of different things that you can do with this. You can use Blood Blade Dance, which is probably your best bet. You can use the Light Attacks. You can add another Twin Blade and Bleed, but keep in mind two regular Twin Blades and Blood will beat it in terms of Bleed buildup, and you can add Frost in the offhand too. And you're going to see a posture break here, which ends up surprising me. Apparently, Blood Blade Dance does posture damage, too. A little bit surprising, because these dragons, they probably have around 80 poise or so. I'm not exactly sure on their poise damage. I thought the dragon had died, but apparently he had been posture broken. Pretty epic that you can get some poise damage out of Blood Blade Dance, too. And I'm going to show off the posture break again here. We're going to speed up the fight with this dragon a little bit. And he's going to end up being posture broken, too, by Blood Blade Dance. As you can see, with all of it hitting, it does a significant amount of damage and bleed buildup. Definitely surprised that we're able to get in there and get two posture breaks, one on the first dragon and one on the second dragon using Blood Blade Dance. We do manage to get a critical hit here as well, and you can see that the bleed build up, the fire damage, the physical damage, it all adds up to a very solid build. Yeah, pretty amazing Ash of War at the end of the day, and for the second one here, we did swap out for the Claw Talisman. I'm going to show off the ability that you have with Fire and Frost and a little bit of bleed build up in there too with the jump attacks and having a Cold Twin Blade in the offhand. So you would go for Chilling Mist in the offhand on any Cold Twin Blade, anyone that scales with some dexterity, because we need dexterity for Eleanor's Pull Blade anyway, and then you can do your jump attacks, and the fire will actually reset the frost, giving you the ability to proc bleed and frost, and then reproc frost. By the way, in a second here, and keep in mind these dragons are decently uh, resistant against status effects and slash, we're going to show off the build for the jump attack version of Eleanor's Pull Blade. For equipment, we have Eleanor's Pull Blade plus 10. We have a regular Twin Blade in Cold with Chilling Mist, Raptor's Black Feathers, White Mask. We have the Shard of Alexander, Lord of Blood's Exaltation, Claw Talisman, Melissa's Prosthesis, or Ritual Swords Talisman, Thorny Tier, Fate Tier. And the stats are going to remain the same as what we're going to show off later, although there's a difference in the build for using the Ash of War. We have 60 Vigor, 20 Mind, 26 Endurance, 45 Dexterity, 45 Arcane. And I'm going to show one more clip on another dragon here. I know we fought the dragons a lot, but I use these in Kaled for testing a lot. They're really helpful because they're basically respawning mini bosses. And we end up getting another poise break, which is huge. Even with the jump attacks, we managed to get in another posture break. The more I used and tested this weapon, the more I found myself enjoying it. And if you use a combination of the frost in combination with the blood blade dance, you can end up doing a lot of damage in general, especially if you proc frost first and then mix in the jump attacks with a whole bunch of blood blade dances because honestly the ash of war is incredible again if i were to go back now for the top 40 builds that i did the top 40 overpowered builds on the main channel i would probably put this in between 30 and 40 as i mentioned earlier i think it definitely fits in there and honestly it's better than i remember it being and for how we're buffing this before we go over the build for the weapon art and this really awesome weapon that's a ton of fun to use, we drank our tier first, which has the faith tier in it. After that, we use Golden Vow. Then we're going to fill up our FP. Then we're going to use Flame Grammy Strength. And then you get to use Blood Blade Dance, which I promise you'll have fun with. By the way, if you're just coming back and you're using the Rivers of Blood but realize it wasn't, isn't what it used to be, try out this weapon for sure. Let's jump into equipment. For equipment, we have Eleanor's Pole Blade plus 10. We have the Dragon Communion Seal. It scales with Arcane, so why not? Raptor's Black Feathers, White Mask. We have the Shard of Alexander, Lord of Blood's Exaltation, Rotten Wing Sword, Signia, Melissa's Prosthesis, or Ritual Swords, Talisman, Thorny Tier, Fate Tier. Let's jump into stats. And for stats, since there's basically no difference from earlier, I'm probably going to timestamp this, though. If I wanted to put it in here, I'll just go over it real quick. 60 Vigor, 20 Mind, 26 Endurance, 45 Dexterity with Melissa's Prosthesis, 45 Arcane, and then we have 25 Faith with the uh, Fate Tier. 
And for our buffs, we're using Golden Vow and Flame Grammy Strength. Flame Grammy Strength, by the way, is excellent for this build because it increases both fire and physical damage. By the way, apologies for how I sound. I've been losing my voice kind of all week on and off. I've had like this cold type uh, flu thing for like a week now that's been going on. Hopefully this goes away soon and I can get back to my normal self. But I want to show the weapon art one more time here on an NPC Invader. You can see it does incredible damage and it procs bleed relatively fast too. Highly recommend trying this one out. You're going to have a lot of fun with it. If you're looking for a replacement for the Rivers of Blood, look no further. Eleanor's Pole Blade will definitely, it's definitely perfect for that, honestly. Thanks for watching this one. Be sure to sub if you like my content. Also, if you haven't seen my top 40 overpowered builds, be sure to check that out. That's going to be in the description below. Definitely check that video out if you're looking for some really powerful builds. If you like the shorter content, be sure to sub to this channel. Sub to my main channel if you like the overpowered stuff too. And comment below if there's something that you want to see next or a showcase for a weapon. I will catch everybody soon and I hope you have a wonderful day.